Ladies and gentlemen, this is Inga Wrestling News. It's very own Brendan, and I'm here with your February the 17th, 2021 AEW Dynamite review. This week's AEW was a really, really good show. AEW Dynamite opens up with Hangman Page making his entrance for the tag team match. Now, Matt Harley, Matt Hardy follows his tag partner to make his way to the ring. Now, a replay from last week's segment where Paige fakes out signing Matt's contract. Now, Matt Hardy and Heyman Page versus TH2 was a very, very good match. In fact, Page calling Hardy on his money rebelling ways and setting up a pay per view match with a nice touch. The Dark Order comes to his aid. Thus showing him who his real friends are was even better. Now the match itself was fine for what it is. Even if it was uncharacteristically one dimensional despite the talent involved. Now Hardy played a role of weak Link who steals the win anyway to perfection while Paige continued to portray expensive Explosive babyface excellent. Now, there was an argument to be made that Paige should be doing something further up the card. But he has been golden in anything he has done since the start of AW, and he is owing this story. The minute he embraces, the Dark Order will be a magical one for both him and the faction, thanks to the slow burn the company has executed to this point. Now, Serena did versus Riho. This match right here, man, was a pre-pay-per-view quality match. A damn good one at that. The counter-wrestling and drama late helped elevate it, particularly as the live crowd bought into every false finish. Threw in tenacity and physically, we had not yet seen out of Div. And you have to ingredients of a match of the year candidate. Add two Master Chiefs, and the finished result was simply phenomenal. Now, Riho hardly missed a beat, returning to form and stealing the show, while Div continued to remind fans why she is one of the most underrated in ring performers in the industry. Regardless of gender, hopefully her semi-push continues beyond this tournament because, honestly, she has been nothing short of Super B since joining the AEW Women's Division, man. For real. Really, man. So, then we got Orange Cassidy versus Luther. Orange Cassidy versus Luther, man. This was certainly a match that happened, man. It really was. If anything, it was a reminder that Cassidy is a wrestler and Tyler is now free. Otherwise, this was a squash match whose only purpose was to potentially set up a tag team match between Best Friends and Chaos Project. Now, the Team Taz attacking Steam. So, Team Taz, minus a few key members due to weather and travel, hit the ring. Now, the leader of the team, the human... Suplex Machine himself addressed Steam. He called the icon out and the face painted Vagilant of AEW made his way to the ring. Now, upon the existence by Tax that he needed his baseball bat to confront him, Son Hook and Brian Cage, Steam tossed the weapon down. The numbers game eventually proved in Shrumble and Cage flatlined Steam with a power bomb. Now the wrestling world held its collective breath as Steam hit the mat in his first bump since Night of Champions 2015 when he suffered his intentional spine injury. Luckily he took he looked to be relatively okay as he sold the effects of the beatdown. From a booking perspective the attack proved that apart that Sting and Darby Allen cannot compete with Team Tax. 
if the heels can isolate them, they can ruin Sting's return to the squared circle on March the 7th. In a regard, it was well done. The lack of key players, including Allen, Ricky, Starks, and Powerhouse Hobbs, dragged it down just a bit. Now, the AEW Tag Team Championship match, Young Bucks versus Santos and Ortiz. This match right here, man, the streak of great matches continued with this, man. Santos, or Santana, should I say, and Ortiz reminded fans of their excellence and the Bucks crafted another extraordinary dramatic match. Now, the biggest takeaway from this one was MJF getting himself in the inner circle kicked out so Santana and Ortiz could not benefit. It was the latest in the loudmouth ejection plan to systematically pick apart the faction from the inside. Also, of uh, note, that is that Jericho and MJF forced a submission out of the box. Now, perhaps hinting at Matt and Nick's future, they will likely clash at Revolution. The question is whether the Inner Circle can survive until then or not. We never know. We'll find. Guess we'll find out. Guess we'll find out sooner or later. So we got Matt and Mike Sedell, the Sedell brothers versus. FTR. Now, FTR versus Matt and Mike Sedell, the Sedell brothers. This was a least expected wrestler in this match. Mike was. And it showed. The effort was there, but there were more than a few disjoint spots and an injury scar at one point that Cody Rose referred on commentary. Cody Rhodes referred to that on commentary, and Jurassic Express advancing the beatdown from a few weeks ago was necessary while a match between them and FTR appears a certainty, perhaps as soon as Revolution. Given the given previous encounters, it has the potential to steal the show and enhance an already loaded tag division. Now, we got this main event. So we got John Moxley, Ray Phoenix, and Lance Archer versus Eddie Kingston, Butcher, and Blake. Now that match was a great match. Moxley and Kingston keeping their rivalry alive while in commentary. Team speculated that the former AEW champion wants to regain a friendship with him. It was excellent. It was, it, it, it was phenomenal, man. It was awesome. Their encounters are so emotional. They were so emotionally intense and deliver such a realism that it's impossible not to get sucked into what they are doing. Now, the callbacks, including the bulldog choke, were nice touches. Archer was a total badass. Phoenix has high flying self, and Butcher, Butcher and Blade, were very much the glue that helped hold this one together. Now, the post-match beatdown and the announcement of the Revolution main event were fine, but that gimmick match feels way, way, way over here. Their first pay-per-view match main event, their first pay-per-view main event was obviously violent to the extent that it was comical. Yep. Omega breaking out that stipulation threatens to turn what should be an extraordinary, extraordinary match into a caricature. Yes! But the formers and fans alike both deserve better than that. So. That's all I got to say, man. That's going to do it for your AEW February the 17th, 2021 AEW Dynamite review. If you enjoyed this review, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, hit that thumbs down. Also, if you're new to the channel, man, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications. And also, 
Follow me on Twitter at Ingram Wrestling for the latest WWE news. And also follow me on Twitch. Help me get up to 1,000 followers on there and help me get up to 1,000 followers on Twitter as well. Also, I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers over on YouTube. I am dangerously close to 200, so help me get there by hitting that subscribe button. And turn on that bell for notifications so you won't never miss my Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Xenoverse 2, Naruto, and Storm Storm 4, and Ingram Master News content, and much more content that will be coming to the channel this year. And my newest content that's coming to the channel, which includes WWE Battlegrounds, Jump Force, and much more. Gaming content. So I'm out of here, folks. Peace. See you. See you on my Dota Smackdown live stream, and you'll hear from me on my Smackdown review. And coming up next, right here on my Ingram Wrestling News YouTube channel, NXT UK will be live. That's coming up next right here on the channel. Peace. My NXT UK review.